My name's Simon Bowler and this is how we do plastic framework for composite decking. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next project. We're going to be replacing this very tired, very dilapidated wooden deck with a very beautiful, very high-end composite deck. What's interesting is that there's going to be no timber involved in this whatsoever. All of the framework and all of the decking and all of the clips are going to be composite. Let's get into it. I'll be honest, it is definitely ready for a bit of work. So I was invited out to meet these clients part way through last year and they explained to me that this deck had been implemented somewhere between 10 and 15 years ago. They very much enjoyed using it, provides a great entertainment space and under normal circumstances would have furniture on it. They don't want to replace it with an alternative surface finish such as paving. They do want to keep it as decking but they definitely want to introduce as much longevity as possible. So I suggested a composite deck coupled with composite framing. And as I said, there is no timber. So in terms of lifespan, we've absolutely maximized that. The shape of the deck is gonna remain largely the same. There is some steps here. We're gonna change the configuration of those. Currently these three steps kind of work, but they kind of need a bit of improvement. We're gonna remove those three and replace it with one generous one that sits in between this soil level and the deck level. They're going to address this soil, probably turn it back into turf in the future. Also around here, there's another step that takes you from the deck into the garage. That is going to remain largely the same. This sleeper, that's going to stay. We're going to attach our composite decking directly to that just to minimise the amount of remedial works that have to be done. That is our brief first job. Put that deck in the skip, conveniently located on the drive. So that was a hectic couple of hours. All of that old deck is now in the skip and we've got this back to bare soil. We've just started to put a couple of string lines down, nice and parallel so we can see where the new deck's going to go. The new deck is gonna be supported on concrete blocks. So we've got some very careful setting out to do for those concrete blocks, which are in turn gonna be laid on concrete themselves. So it's gonna be a very strong substructure. There's gonna be a solid row to support all the joists and blocks every 1.5 meters to support the perimeter joists. All that will come clear when we get going with the next chapter. A little bit of hand digging to follow, so we can get a mix on and get some blocks laid. Right, just a little side note on the concrete blocks we're using, because not all concrete blocks are born equal. These ones are 7.2 kilonewton solid four inch high density concrete blocks and we're going to be laying them on the bellies like that. The whole idea is to create a really stable, strong substructure that has as much longevity as we possibly can. That's why we've gone with these solid concrete blocks. I've got a few of these concrete blocks in now. We use the laser level to set the depth of the trench. We found the height of the blocks added 200 millimetres onto that and that allowed us to dig the trench at the right height. That means we've got four inches, 100 millimetres of concrete underneath the 100 mil thick concrete blocks. The blocks are going down straight on the wet concrete, a little bit like laying curbs. So this whole thing will go off concrete on top of concrete, just makes more concrete. And it's this, like I've said before, it's this that's gonna be supporting our frame. All the joists are gonna be running across the way like this. So we've got some other pads dug out. They're gonna have concrete and concrete blocks in and they're gonna support the perimeter joist. It'll all come clear. But for now, I've got a few more blocks to lay.
just one final side note on these concrete blocks. Because we've laid them directly onto wet concrete without a sand and cement joist, I'm just going back along now and putting a generous concrete haunch in just to make doubly sure that they can't go anywhere. So these are now nipped in by this concrete haunch. Blocks are done. Now I'm no carpet fitter, but weed membrane is very important. There will be a little tiny little bit of light gets to the ground in between the deck boards because the deck boards have a small gap in. And it doesn't look good if you've got grass growing out of your deck. This stops that weed suppressant membrane pegged down. Not decorative, very functional, and in my opinion, absolutely crucial. Okay, time to move on to our plastic framing. This is it. This is an Ecoscape product. It's 100% plastic. It's 100% recycled. So it's quite friendly. This particular product is five inches deep, two inches thick, 125 by 50, and it will span 1.5 meters. It has to be supported every 1.5 meters. So we're gonna cut all these to length now and assemble a frame spacing these every 400 millimeters. Session the chop saw. Right, we've spent a day or so now just assembling this frame and it's pretty much there. I just wanted to talk about one or two of the details and the whys and the what fors. First off, we've fixed it all together with these. These are 6.7 millimeter thick, 100 millimeter long, very, very heavy duty construction screws. We've used thousands of these over the years and I rate them very highly. You do have to pre-drill them with this plastic product, but that's part of it. That's part of the nature of the beast. All the joists are set out at 400 millimeter centers with the exception of a couple of areas here and there. At each end, there is a triple joist detail that is to carry the picture frame. That will make sense when we come to fit the deck. There's a pair of joists strategically placed to carry the end of each deck board. The deck boards are 4.8 meters long. The deck is longer than 4.8, so there's gonna be a staggered joint pattern. That's what they're there for. The ladder that you can see at the back that is because the overall dimensions of this deck were longer than the available length of this material. These plastic joists come at three meters, the deck is bigger, so we've extended our frame. The joist pattern changes, that really doesn't matter because none of the fixings are seen, so you'll never know. Again, 400 mil centers. The available span on these joists is maximum of 1.5 meters. So all the concrete blocks we put in were to facilitate this scenario whereby there is no unsupported span greater than 1.5 meters and it's worked very, very well. We've walked around on it quite a bit and it feels extremely rigid. And that's kind of the aim of the game at this stage, make it as strong and as durable as you possibly can. Last thing, we've got a row of noggins to put in that we've got laid out. That's a short piece of joist that sits in between the joist, firms everything up further, adds a bit of extra rigidity and help take, helps take any twist out of the joists. And that's pretty much it for the framework up to press.
let's talk about this step. There's a couple of notable points that I want to share with you about this step. The ground falls away here, so we haven't been able to use or we've chosen not to use concrete blocks to support this corner of the frame. We've decided to use a four inch by four inch solid plastic post, so there's still no timber in ground contact. We've dug a hole and concreted it in. We've actually used postcrete in this instance just for speed. One in the corner and one here where the step is going to finish. There'll be two more of those at the front of the step that will come clear. The step frame is over here which we're going to be assembling now. Now I've learned over the years a couple of things. Steps have to be built very strong because there's a hundred percent of the foot traffic going to go on the step. It's the only way onto this deck so anybody who goes on the deck is going to put weight and wear and tear on this step so it has to be built very strong. Just because it's a step doesn't mean you can get away with using less. In fact it's the opposite. If you're going to change the joist pattern layout you should put more in to just beef it up. The other thing I've learnt is how deep steps need to be. In my opinion, they should be deeper than internal steps. So we've set this out to accommodate exactly three deck boards. That's about all there is to talk about now. We just need to get on and get it assembled. Then we can mark out where we're going to dig some holes, put it in place and concrete it in. Right, a couple of side notes on this step. Now it's in situ. The posts are concreted in, same plastic posts as the ones that we used in the far corner of the deck and just over here as well. Before we concreted them in, we wound a few screws into the bottom of them and left them poking out that so that it grips the concrete that we've put in the hole. A trick I've used for years and years and years. We've also put some blocks, just used some offcuts that we've had there to facilitate the fascia board. That'll make more sense in the not too distant future. And in terms of its final height, we took an average of uh, this area here, found our total distance and put the step directly in the middle to make sure as far as possible, we've got two equal steps onto the deck. So that's the final little piece of this deck frame. So that is how we do plastic framework for composite decking. This method suits us. You may well do it differently and that's absolutely fine. If you've learned something, that's brilliant. If you've got any questions, feel free to get in the comments and I'll do my level best to respond to all of them. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at how we move this project from where we are now to a final finish. So we're going to look at the actual decking, the final surface finish. We're going to be looking at the clips that we use to fix it down. There's three different types. We're going to be looking at the picture frame detail and on that basis, it may well be worth subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.